Good morning, our brothers and sisters in Christ, and those who may be watching. Today, we will be doing our Sunday school lesson, and we will be coming from our Young Readers book today. So, let us have a word of prayer. Precious Lord, we just love you, we just honor you, we just adore you. Precious Father, we just thank you for our health and strength. We thank you for all that is as well as it is, dear God. Father God, we do pray that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart truly be found acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' precious name we do pray. Amen. Today, we will be talking about watch your tongue. Sometimes it's hard to do. But we are going to see what James has to say about watching our tongue. Our key verse today in our book says, From the same comes blessings and curses, my brothers and sisters. This ought not be so. And that's found James, the third chapter and the tenth verse. Like I said, our topic, watch our tongue. Sometimes it's hard to bridle the tongue. But James tells us in our lesson today that it's never good to speak evil. He said it's nev it never feels good when we say something that's mean. And words can hurt people. He says sometimes... Some things we may say make us feel bad about ourselves. And it can change the way we think about different things when we say hurtful things. James wants us to think about that. He tells us in today's book, he says that our tongue or our words are very powerful. The things we say can be very powerful and very instrumental. Very, it can be very important in somebody's life, either in a good way or a bad way. So even though it seems little, like a rudder that turns a ship, or like a bit that turns a horse, our small words can make a big difference in someone else's life. And maybe in our lives, depending on what we're saying and speaking of our lives. That's why it's important to think. We've got to think about what we're saying. We have to have a sound mind in what we're saying. So James tells us to think about things before we say them. Because we never know what type of effect it's going to have on someone. Do your words bring glory to God? Do they make people happy or sad? When we say something, as children of God, we should make sure it is something that will make somebody happy that will encourage somebody, that will build someone up, that will make someone glad and happy to be in your presence and to have heard you speak, not something that will tear them down or hurt them or make them feel bad or destroy them. How will people look at you when you speak? What do they think about you when you say things? James wants us to think about that. Everything that we say should be done to the glory of God. When we speak, it should be something that we know that will bless someone's life, not curse someone's life. As children of God, we are here to build up and bless. There are so many things that the Bible says about the tongue. There's a few scriptures, such as Proverbs, the 13th chapter, 
and the third verse, it says, whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. Now, we want to preserve our life. He opens wide his lips, comes to burn. Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt talking come out of your mouth, but only such as good for building up, as fit the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear it. Proverbs 10 and 20 tells us, The words of a good person is like pure sip. <laughs> Just how worth, how much worth silver is, but an evil person thoughts are worth very little. Proverbs twenty six and twenty tells us, without wood the fire will go out, and we know without gossip quarrels will stop. Proverbs. 11 and 17 tells us, Your soul is nourished when you are kind, but you destroy yourself when you are cruel. Now who would want to destroy themselves? So let's make sure we're speaking love, kindness, not something that will curse you. First Peter 3 and 9 tells us, Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessings because this is what you're called to do. This is something that you will inherit as a blessing. Proverbs 16 and 24 tells us, kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul, and healthy for our bodies. And we want healthy bodies. We want long life, long longevity, and we want to be in perfect health, feeling good. So we know that if we want it, others want it also. Matthew, the 15th chapter and the 18th verse says, But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. So make sure what we're speaking out of our mouth is not defiled. Make sure it's a blessing. Make sure it's edifying someone. Make sure we're speaking encouragement. We're building up. We're comforting others. We're saying things that we know will help someone, will help them to continue the race. They might not be feeling good. They might just need one kind word to see it from you. This is our calling as children of God. One of my favorite poems say that in a world where you can be anything you want to be, choose to be kind. And that's what I'm challenging you to do. Choose to be kind with your words. Choose to be uplifting. Choose to be edifying. Choose to be a blessing this day and forevermore. May the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart be found worthy and pleasing to God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Love you and miss you. Bye-bye. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. How blessed we are once again uh, to have this privilege of standing uh, before you today on another Lord's Day. And I don't know about you today, but I'm glad, amen, to be here. Because I found now that the Lord had looked beyond my faults, saw all my needs, and that the Lord woke me up this morning and started me off on another day's journey. Amen. And my soul says, thank you, Jesus, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon me.
There's a word that we want to share with you today. It's found in Luke's gospel. Very familiar passage of scripture. You have heard me, amen, uh, uh, do it a, a time or two. And I just want to remind us, amen, of how blessed we are to be hooked up with Jesus. In Luke chapter 16, we're going to break in on the 22nd through the 24th verse. There you find these words. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham before all, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father, Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And as I said earlier, it's just a reminder of an old sermon that I did from the subject matter, what in hell do you want? Hell, my brothers and sisters, is the place prepared for the devil and those who have rejected Jesus Christ, amen, as their Lord and their Savior. Someone told me uh, the other day that it was hot outside. But if we think that it is hot this summer, just wait till death, hell, and those who did not accept Christ as the Lord and Savior are thrown into the lake of fire, which will burn forever and ever, which the Bible calls the second death. And I want to pause right here uh, to encourage us and thank God, amen, for all of those who have accepted Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. And this is just a reminder for those who may have not yet uh, accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior today. The question uh, today is, what in hell do you want? The Bible uh, teaches us that if a person does not accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior, they will find themselves in a place called hell. It also teaches that if a person wants to avoid going to hell, they must repent and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. The word repent means to turn or to change their direction. And the Bible gives us a clear list of those who are in danger of going to hell. The list is found in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 8, where it says that the fearful, the unbelievable, the abominable, murderers and homongers and sorcerers and all liars should have a part in the lake which burned with brimstone, which is the second death. And I'm so glad once again that God saw me on this list at one time and then allow me to confess my sin and accept him as Lord and Savior. And then once I accepted him as Lord and Savior, all my sins of the past, all my sins of the present tense, and those who may come in the future tense are all forgiven because I am covered by the blood of the Lamb. And it's good uh, to be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. When you're covered by the blood, no weapon will be able to penetrate of the blood and try to snatch you out of my father's hand. Here in this text, Luke records the story of a man who believed that he lived good enough to please God without, the, without having to worry about how he treated other people. Many people are like this man. They make God's teaching secondary in their daily life, and they treat people without love, amen, and respect. But the Bible says, how can you say that you love God, whom you have never seen, and can't love your neighbor, whom you see 
every day. This man in the text uh, indicated that he did not love his neighbor and that he lived to please himself. And it also indicates that he was an unbeliever. For if he was a believer, he would get along with his neighbor and treat his neighbor the way that he would want to be treated. You need to know today that a person cannot live good enough to make God love them, nor bad enough that God don't love them. But it does teach us that we must, amen, love one another. Some people have said, well, I'm coming to church just as soon as I can, or I'm coming to Christ just as soon as I get myself right, or I'm coming just as soon as I can buy me some church clothes, or just as soon, amen, as I get to be an old person. Some even say that they have lived so bad that they just can't come to church. And they also say that I've treated people so bad that I just can't come and I don't think God would be in the forgiving business. They even say, you know, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. But I turned around and I looked at them and they said, well, the Bible says that there's only one sin that cannot be forgiven. And that is unbelief, or what the Bible calls blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. That is the sin of unbelief. There is no forgiveness for unbelief. Anything else can be forgiven, will be forgiven, but unbelief cannot be forgiven. First of all, the Bible said this man was in hell. And he had news, as you read on down, that he wanted to share with his kinfolk back home who were still alive. He wanted to go back and tell them that hell is a real place. How did he know that hell was real? We know because the Bible says that in hell, he lifted up his eyes being in torment. This description of hell, my brothers and sisters, leave no doubt in my mind that the rich man died and went to a place called hell. The money he had did not send him. His destiny depended upon his relationship with God. Second, we need to know that hell is not a myth, as some people claim it to hell be. Hell is a real place, and the devil is a real person. Some people have inched in their mind that the devil is someone who had a long pointed tail, long ears and wear a red suit and walk around with a fish fork in his hand. I don't know today what it looks like, but I believe that he is real just like you and I are real. Third, news from hell is that hell is a hot place. The Bible says that the rich man lived his eyes in hell and he was tormented. He found himself being burned with a fire that would never go out. He found out that he is living in misery, pain day in and day out. The rich man uh, learned how to beg for mercy. He was a man who gave no mercy, but now he found himself begging for just a drop of water from the tip of Lazarus' finger. He wanted just enough to wet his lips. He wanted to go back to his kinfolk with news that hell is a real place and that hell is very hot. The folk news today from hell is that hell is a everlasting place. So many people have asked me over the years, uh, that will we be able to recognize people once they get to heaven or once they get to hell? Well, if you believe in the scripture now, the Bible says, in hell, he lifted up his eyes and saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. He saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom 
because heaven was not yet open. It was not open until Jesus died, rose from the grave, and went back to heaven. The only people that ever went direct to heaven before Jesus came was Enoch and a man called Elijah. And now that Jesus had ascended back up to heaven, now when a person dies, if he is born again, they are absent from the body, but yet present with God. And if they are not born again, in hell is the place that they open up their eyes in. The Bible says that the rich man saw Lazarus. Just let me know that when you get to heaven, or if you don't make it to heaven, you are going to see the saved and the unsaved in those places. I believe in my sanctified mind because I believe in what the Bible teaches. I believe that you will see the saved in heaven and you will be able to look over and see the unsaved in hell. The fifth news of hell is that there will be no second chances in hell. This man was in possession of his conscience and he described how he felt and he retained his memory. The Bible don't say anything else about another soul that was around him. So I conclude with my own mind that this man received his heart mansion in hell. Yeah. The six news from hell is that there is a great gulf between heaven and hell. And once a person get there, there will not be any second chances of getting out. Once a person get there, they will stay there and burn forever in the lake of fire. In other words, there will not be any parolees in hell. Not like it is down here in the state penitentiary. If you be good in the state penitentiary, they will let you become a trustee. And then after you become a trustee, if you're good enough, they'll let you out. But in hell, there will not be any getting out. They will be there forever and hell. Well, why do people go to hell? People go to hell because they refuse to accept Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. They go because they choose to go on their own way and leave Jesus out of everything. We need to quit Amen. Telling folk they are going to hell because they lie. We need to quit telling folk, amen, that they are going to hell because you don't like them. Amen. The only reason a person will go to hell is because uh, they refuse to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. They all the little better. Amen. But those things will not carry a person to hell. I don't know about you, but I'm glad today to know that the story don't stop there. For I heard uh, the record say that God uh, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Ain't you glad today, amen, to know that you came to Jesus just as you was, amen, weary, worn, and saved. But ain't you know, amen, that you found in him a resting place, and he has made you glad. 
I can say it all for myself. I'm glad that I came to Jesus. I was weary, wound, and sad. I was wounded by a man sin darts that was thrown at me. I was wounded uh, by my life before I met Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. And I heard him say that I am a who that I am. I am uh, the single uh, who was with Daniel in the lion's den. Same God uh, who were with the Hebrew boys uh, in the fiery furnace. The same God, a man who said, let them be light uh, and there was light. And I'm glad today to know that hell uh, is not uh, my final resting place. I'm glad uh, that he died uh, for my sin. On Calvary Cross. Now, I'm glad uh, that he died, and not, but he did not stay dead. And not for early, and not Sunday morning, and not he got up, and not with all power in his hand, and not power, and not to confess, and not the hills, and not laws of laws, and not kings, and not of kings, and not and hills, and not. Coming back in the one of these days and the for me in the one of these days and the he gonna swing low and the and I and the will catch and the the train and the and go back and the will and the my God and the don't know when and the and I don't bother me no and the but one of these days and the I gotta get out of here and the and when I go and the I. I'm not behave I'm not to hear me say I'm not well I'm not done I'm not that good I'm not in favor serving I'm not not because I'm not I've been so good I'm not but because I'm not healed I'm not good to me I'm not for the Bible I'm not said I'm not that God did not love me I'm not so much I'm not that he looked beyond my fault. Ain't you glad to know that you don't have to worry about going to hell? Have a made up mind to know, amen, to heal a God that cannot lie, will not lie. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare, I will come again and receive you. That where I am, there you may be also. My brothers and sisters, take care, take hope, take mercy, and may they all follow you all the days of your life, knowing, amen, that we still serve a God who got all power. And as I say this, let me get out of here. Even in this pandemic we find ourselves in, you still can see the goodness, the mercy, the healing power of God working throughout this land and throughout this country. Look up. Look to the hill from which comes your help. Your help, I guarantee you, comes from the Lord. Be blessed. Stay six foot. Wash your hands. Well, amazed and do thank you, Jesus. Register to vote. We got a election coming up, amen. Uh, in November, that everybody needs to be registered voting for the man in your choice. And I don't know about you, but I'm beginning to even hate playing, amen. Trump calls. Amen. I know that God got everything in control, and now that he has allowed this man to be in office for four years, we ought to be able to see clear on that as to what it is that God wants us to do. Amen. He wants you to come to church when he gets this virus. 
cleared up. He wants you to follow him day in and day out and not just when you want to. Amen. So make sure you go vote. Second thing, make sure you fill out your census information. Count everybody in the house. Don't have to be your child. If they stand there, put them on the paper. Turn it in so that we might be able to get the money, so that we might be able to get what we need here in the great state of Alabama. Only you can make that happen. You've been informed now. Let's see what you're going to do. Bye-bye. We love all of you.